All right, so here's my exposure calculation. This won't visualize anything yet. Um, it basically calculates uh, the exposure at every polygon of that mesh, and it gives you this exposure number. This might be meaningful, like if you've scaled everything correctly, this number might mean something to you. For us, we're just gonna visualize the range of exposures, which will give us the, um, the shadows cast. So to visualize this, um, the first thing we need to do is remap these numbers. So if you go here, there's a range of results. It goes from zero, which is no exposure, to the maximum exposure. And here are the actual values for every mesh face. Um, so to remap these to a, 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 a standard range of zero to one, we're just gonna use the remap numbers tool, which we saw last week. For the values, we're gonna plug in our actual exposure values. And for the starting, the source domain, we're gonna plug in this range. So this is already telling us what the range of the data is, and we'll plug it into the source. So what we get out here is guaranteed to be the same values, but mapped from zero to one. If we wanna visualize the um, distribution of those exposures, kind of like in a histogram, we can also use uh, a bar graph component in Grasshopper, and just plug, if we plug in these um, values in here, you can see the distribution of exposures. You see that a lot of the, if you think of this mesh as like your site, a lot of the site is full exposure. So this is a, you know, the maximum value. And then um, there's 21 faces with this next level of exposure and so on and so forth. So it's like a basic histogram. Um, so if you want any kind of like numerical analysis in addition to visualizing the shadows, you can actually use these kind of graphs to track with different options how much of the site is getting full installation or uh, part installation or no, ins uh, or no, uh, no exposure at all. Okay, so once we have those remapped, we can actually hook them into a component to specify the color from white to black of the, of the mesh. So that's why we remapped them because we're gonna use this HSL component. So HSL is hue, saturation, uh, lightness, or luminance. Um, that's like one way of specifying color. Um, we click that, color HSL. All of the color options are also under um, the vector tab. The first note here, there's different, there's all kinds of ways of working with color. You see the typical RGB, CMYK color components. We're using HSL here because we have a range of numbers that we want to map to the brightness of the mesh and go from white to black basically. So we're gonna hook in these, and each of these is expecting some value from zero to one. So you have hue, saturation, luminance. We're gonna plug in our remapped um, exposure numbers into the luminance. And this will give us now, instead of luminance, a range of numbers from um, lightest to darkest. And then to connect those into our mesh, we're going to first and there's, again, there's also different ways to do, to color things in Grasshopper. We looked at a few examples already. I'm gonna do another example. So it doesn't mean you have to do it like this for this example, like you can use the methods we used before. I just wanna show you a range of different ways to do things. Uh, the method I'm gonna use now is actually to break the mesh apart and then to rebuild it with color information. So it's another way to color meshes is actually to de deconstruct it and then reconstruct it. And in that process, plug in the color information from the mesh. You can see here our original mesh is 441 faces and uh, we have 441 color values. So what we can do is um, go to mesh uh, deconstruct. So it's in analysis, the analysis uh, category under the mesh tab. So we'll plug in the mesh and this will deconstruct it into its uh, vertices, faces, and colors and normals. So I'll just break apart all the information in the mesh. Then we can use a construct mesh component. So you can type in construct this here, or we can go to primitive construct mesh. And this is kind of like the inverse of deconstruct. So if we plug in all the values one to one here, it's just gonna reconstruct our mesh directly. In the original, we didn't have a color information, and that's exactly where we're gonna plug our new color information into. So if we plug in the vertices and the faces, it's gonna give us the same exact mesh, but this time we can plug the color we're getting as an output into here, and our new mesh will basically be the same thing, but with color information. So you can see the initial result. There's two things here. One is that it's red, 
and one is that it's really low resolution. We can fix both those things really easily. Um, the reason it's red is because the saturation value of the HSL component is one by default. So the color will be most saturation at the zero hue. The zero hue is red and it's most saturated. So actually, instead of going from white to black like we want, it'll go from white to red. Uh, all we need to do to fix that is to create uh, uh, an input, we'll just set it to zero, and we'll plug that into the saturation. So this will just desaturate our color and give us the white to black that we want. To fix the resolution, like I mentioned before, we just need to increase the resolution of our mesh plane. So as we bring this up, it will actually bring those shadows into better detail. Um, in this example, something like 200 will give us a pretty good result, but it'll also take a long time to compute. Um, I can put it to 200 here and you can see how long it takes, but it gives us a pretty good resolution result. Um, at this point, it becomes a trade-off between time it takes to compute the resolution you want and the number of samples you want to take for your analysis. Um, if it's taking too long, I can um, decrease the number of samples during the day I'm looking at. So maybe I'll just take seven times in a day and this will start to compute faster and I can also increase my resolution from there. Okay, so now I can kind of go through and to visualize this a little bit better, I can hide some of this geometry and actually bring one of these um, mesh edges components in to just visualize the geometry as a mesh so it doesn't get in the way of looking at our shadow. Okay, so that's our basic sun study. Again, we used Ecotech here just to get the vectors, which isn't so different from what we did with Heliotrope. Uh, it's more specific to our area and it's a little bit easier to work with, but it involves um, using Ecotech. So you can see there's a trade-off in terms of complexity. Um, but in terms of visualizing the shadows itself, we still did that um, just directly with Grasshopper. So it's pretty similar to the class we used before. But, um, like I said, it's using Ecotech, so actually if we shut Ecotech down and we put this to false, so we like turn off this analysis, it will no longer work. So all that data is actually coming from Ecotech. If we, even if we turn it on now and there's no version of Ecotech running, um, this won't work. And it'll basically say it couldn't connect with a version of Ecotech. So you can see that even for something as simple as just getting the geometry of the sun, uh, it already needs that version of Ecotech running. So if we turn this back on now, it'll reload Ecotech, and we just toggle this Boolean, and we get our analysis back.